Hello and welcome to Tech Deals RGB tower air coolers for your CPU, four heat pipes and six heat pipes, two different models with two different RGB controllers, both about $50, linked in the video description below to Amazon and Newegg, check current prices, Price is really important here because if the price of the four heat pipe cooler is low enough, then it becomes the recommendation. But if they're close, then the six heat pipe cooler becomes a recommendation. They are also different in their RGB controllers and how they connect to your motherboard and what motherboards they work with. They are also different in how they appear and how they connect. So, we're gonna take a closer look at these. I do have temps and overclocking results and charts and stuff for you later in the video, but we're gonna start off talking about the features, price, and who should buy these first, and then we'll get to all the specific results later in the video. Today's video is brought to you by Backblaze, the unlimited online backup service for just $5 a month with no throttling and no file size restrictions. Back up all of your personal files, internal and external hard drives supported, no matter how much data you have. I have all of my YouTube videos and all of my work and personal files backed up with Backblaze, and I have been a paying customer since before I had a YouTube channel. So I have a lot of experience with it and it has saved me several times. Check out the link in the description below, two week free trial, no credit card required. Give it a download, give it a try, and you'll see just how quickly it backs up up your files, Backblaze, it is an amazing online service. The first cooler I wanna talk about is the Master Air MA410M, which really should have been called the Hyper 212 RGB, because in many respects, that's what it is. Although they've made several versions of this, if you actually take a look, the four heat pipes on the bottom are basically a Hyper 212. The diameter and the size of the fan of the uh, fins in here is basically the same size as a Hyper 212. And based upon my testing of this, it cools very, very similarly. Now it does have two fans, which is nice, and that does give it a bit more boost. It also enables something really nice, silence. At stock clock speeds, even an i9 is very, very quiet on this cooler. So if you're looking for beautiful RGB and you want silence, I can actually tell you these fans are very, very quiet. I was impressed by that. Now it does have a fan on either side and they are clear, but here's the cool part. The RGB is not in the fans. The RGB is in the center hub, which means you can replace the fans. So long as you replace them with something that has a clear fan blade, you can replace the fans without worrying about the RGB. That could potentially save you money down the road because all fans wait, were out eventually. It also makes hooking up the R RGB cable even easier because there's only one, because all the RGB lights are generated in the center and shine through the fans. It also has this section right here in the middle, which lights up with RGB and has a very cool color effect that you can see from the top. So if you look in the side window of your computer, this lights up, the fans light up. It's actually quite very attractive. Now, as I talk about these coolers throughout this video, I've got a variety of B-roll shots that I've done on my test bench back there. And I'm just gonna show you various random shots of how beautiful these are. Whichever one you're seeing on the screen is the one I'm talking about. Each of the two fans connects to your motherboard separately if you've got two motherboard connectors. These are four pin PWM fans, which are nice. Now the cooler does come with a Y splitter cable. If your motherboard only has a single CPU fan connector, not to worry, a splitter is included. Speaking of included things, there are a number of extension cables if by chance your motherboard has a connector or the RGB connector is far away. So there are extensions for the RGB in there, but let's talk about what it takes to get the RGB into this in the first place. First things first, it does come with an RGB controller. If your motherboard does not have an RGB connector, not to worry. It does come with a multi-featured controller here with a variety of modes. And as I talk here, I'm gonna show you what some of those modes are. Not all of them, because it actually has quite a few. You can also set it to the temperature of your CPU, or rather the temperature of the, of the uh, cooler here, which is nice because it'll start off a very dark blue and work its way towards red when it gets very hot. So if you want it temp controlled, you can do that as well. But it does have a pass-through mode here on the controller and if you look at this tangled mess of cables, 
And yes, it is a tangled mess of cables. You can see two connectors here. One is a four pin and one is a three pin with one hole blocked off for certain models of gigabyte motherboard or adapter cables. Now, what I have learned is that modern gigabyte boards won't actually work with this. I tried, I tried both an X299 and a Z370 board. So if you have a gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 or something similar, the RGB works with the controller, but it doesn't work with your motherboard. This won't plug in and work. It will work with ASUS, uh, MSI, or ASRock, but it does not work with the newer Gigabyte boards. Older Gigabyte boards, it will. But you can still control it using the controller. But if you wanna sync up the lights on this, then you need one of those other brands of boards and then it'll connect to your motherboard and you can do it. I will tell you, cable managing this is a bit of a mess. I really wish they could come up with a better solution for this. Maybe have everything here plugged in together and a single cable coming out. While I worked on this on an open air test bench, I will say that building this into a computer, if this looks like a tangled mess, it is. Honestly, if I had any fault with this whatsoever, besides the fact that it doesn't work with my Gigabyte motherboard, is the fact that the cable management is a bit of a mess. The controller is nice. The RGB is gorgeous. The RGB to the top is gorgeous. It looks nice. It doesn't expose the fins on the side. It's got a nice shroud to pass the air through it. And it cooled very, very well. That brings us to the Master Air MA620P. Yeah, I know, that's a heck of a name. Now, this is definitely not a Hyper 212. It has two separate cooling fin towers, two separate fans in a configuration that puts one in the middle. It is actually relatively easy to install. Even though it is larger than this, I actually have to say, installing it was no big deal. It was no more difficult than a smaller one was. And the cable management is much, much nicer. Now the included controller is not as customizable as this one is. If you use the RGB controller, it doesn't have all the features and modes or the pass-through that the 410 does. But this works directly connected to all the motherboards, including the Gigabyte boards, the Z370 Gaming 7 or the X470 Gaming from uh, Gigabyte. This will work directly connected and the motherboard will control this where it won't control this. So if that's important to you, well, then your decision should be easy. Um, as far as the cable management goes, you do still have two fan, uh, two fan headers for the two fans, just like this one. And of course, a Y splitter cable is included, but this is what's really nice. The fans are RGB rather than the hub. It's missing the hub in the top down view, but this connects to the RGB of the two fans and plugs directly in your motherboard. You can also plug this into the included RGB controller but I just plugged it into my Gigabyte motherboard. Cable management was easy. Now my Gigabyte board has two fan headers, so I didn't use the Y cable. Plug the two fans directly into two of the fan headers on the board, plug in the two connectors on this side, and plug this side into the motherboard, done. It is that simple. It is so much better than the cable management, in my opinion, on this one. I really, really like this cooler. And if the price of these two is pretty close to each other, when you watch this video, if these are within 10 or $20 of each other, buy the 620p. It is easier to install, easier to configure, works with all of the brands of motherboards currently on the market, and it cools better. Where I would consider the 410 is if either A, you like the fact that you can't see the fins on the side, you like the fact that you can see RGB on the top, and you don't have a gigabyte board and thus you can plug it directly into your ASUS or ASRock or MSI, or if it's just a lot cheaper. Both of these coolers come with all the mounting hardware you could possibly want. And this is really nice, a tube of thermal paste. It's not pre-applied, which means you can take it off and reapply it multiple times. There's at least a half a dozen applications of thermal paste in the tube, which in my opinion is far superior to just pre-applied thermal paste that you cannot replace without buying thermal paste. Any CPU from the past 10 plus years, except for AMD's Threadripper is supported by both of these coolers, all the way back to Core 2 Duos, if you want, or old AMD Athlon X2s, and everything in between. Skylake X, Coffee Lake, Ryzen, the FX series chips, take your pick. These will mount to pretty much anything. So that leaves us with 
who should buy these coolers and what CPU should you install them on? Now I have a number of AMD chips here. We'll get to Intel in just a second. Up here, we have the older FX-based chips and the older Athlon-based CPUs. If you have one of the older Athlon chips, Athlon X4 or one of the A10 or A12 APUs, either on the older AM3 socket or perhaps on the new AM4 socket, but you have one of those chips, then the 410M would be a perfectly fine choice. It'll run it cool, it'll run it quiet. It is relatively expensive compared to the cost of the chip, but if the stock cooler is too loud for you, if you wanna get a bit of, bit of an overclock, then this will certainly do it. If you have one of the FX-based chips, something like an FX8300 or perhaps FX6300, then I would strongly encourage you to get the six heat pipe cooler, the 620P. For overclocking it to four gigahertz or 4.5 gigahertz or beyond, you want that extra cooling. The chip does tend to run pretty hot, but it certainly will work well for a CPU like that. And it will be much, much quieter and run cooler than the stock cooler that comes with it. That brings us to the Ryzen CPUs in front of me. We have one of the Ryzen 5 2400G APUs, could also be the Ryzen 3 2200G, and then we have a Ryzen 7 1700, which comes with the Wraith Spire RGB cooler, but the RGB on the Wraith Spire RGB is fairly limited. It's just a ring uh, around the top of it. It's kind of small. If you want these gorgeous RGB fans, these are worthy upgrades. Depends upon how much RGB is in your system. Now, the first generation 1700X and 1800X did not come with coolers, and if you find a deal on one of those and you're buying one of those, these would be awesome coolers for those chips. Anywhere between 3.8 to 4 gigahertz is very, very reasonable on a Ryzen 7 1700X or 1800X. Now the second gen chips come with coolers. The non-X chip comes with the RGB cooler. The X chip comes with the Wraith Prism RGB. I would just use that one. It's a really, really good cooler. It's actually roughly equal to the 410M here, four heat pipe direct contact cooler. But if you want a bit more, you could get the 620P here and it would give you some extra cooling and it would give you a couple hundred megahertz extra overclock. Just be aware that most Ryzen chips only have a few hundred megahertz of overclock. So part of the reason to do this is not just how much overclocking you can get, but also either fan noise or RGB appearance just because you like the look of them as opposed to the ones that are included with the chips. Finally, that brings us to Intel. Now in front of me here, I have the i3, i5, and i7 Coffee Lake K chips. These do not come with coolers. You have to provide your own. In my opinion, these are the ideal CPUs to use with these coolers. The Intel chips, while very fast, do tend to run a bit hot. And so these higher end coolers do a good job of cooling them down. The i7-8700K on either of these coolers at stock speed will boost to 4.3 gigahertz on all six cores, 12 threads, and both of these will run cool and quiet at stock speeds. It will turbo to 4.7 on a single core, but on all cores, it'll run at 4.3. Now, certainly the i3 and i5 will have no trouble at stock speeds, and they'll overclock a bit as well. But back to the i7. If you want to overclock the i7, I would strongly recommend the 620P. The extra cooling capacity of the dual fin towers and the six heat pipes is going to give you a bit more overclock at a cooler temperature. 4.5 to 4.7 on all six cores and 12 threads is doable if you don't mind a bit of fan noise. The fans will spin a bit faster with that much of an overclock. Five gigahertz is not gonna happen. You've gotta spend in the $100 price range for cooling if five gigahertz is your goal. You're just not gonna get it at the $50 price point. I've not tested any $50 coolers that will do five gigahertz, not just Cooler Master, but any brand. But if you're okay with a mid-level overclock and you don't mind a little bit of fan noise, it'll certainly do it. At stock speed, these are both very, very quiet on all the Intel chips. And that, by the way, also includes the i9-7900X 10-core 20-thread chip, which I tested these on, and at stock speeds, cool and quiet. What about the non-K chips, like the i5-8400 or the i7-8700 non-K? Either one of these are fine. At stock speeds, if you want the RGB or the stock fan is loud and you want something quieter, these will be cool and silent or as silent as they'll ever get on the non-K chips. And they certainly would make a reasonable option if you just like the appearance and simply want a much cooler running system than the stock fans are going to give you. 
Now this is a real-time system stability test in A to 64 on the i9-7900X on the Master Air 620p between stock clock speed and 4.5 gigahertz. Just a note, the clock speeds are lower than you might otherwise expect because I have the FPU stress on which turns on the AVX512 instructions, which is why you see 3.3 and 4.0 gigahertz instead of 4.0 and 4.5 respectively. If you uncheck the FPU, then they'll be running at the higher speeds. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look at some numbers here. At stock speeds, this cooler does 45 degrees Celsius on this 10 core 20 thread Intel processor. That's really good. The fan speed is just under 1200 RPM and the power consumption is, for this CPU at least, a very reasonable 125 watts. Compare these numbers to the right. We have 81 degrees Celsius on the CPU when overclocked, 1750 RPM on the fan, and just over 200 watts of power consumption. These are huge increases to temperature, power, and noise for a relatively modest overclock. Now it's faster to be sure, but the real world performance difference between stock and 4.5 gigahertz setting with everything le le else left at auto is not as much as you'd think. Let's take a look at some benchmark results. At stock speeds, we have about 2200 in Cinebench R15 versus 2400 and change overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Now Cinebench doesn't use the AVX512, so it's running at higher clock speeds on both stock and overclock. But as you can see here, it's not a huge difference. From a percentage point of view, there's only an 11% real-world performance difference overclocking this CPU. Now going back to those temperature power draw and fan noise settings, is it worth all that for 11%? I would submit that it's not. One more test I'd like to show you, CPU-Z. You can see here the single-threaded and multi-threaded test between stock speeds and 4.5 gigahertz overclocked. Yes, the numbers are bigger and they're impressive, but how much so? Here we have a 12% increase at 4.5 versus stock speeds in the multi-threaded test. It makes the numbers look nice, and I understand people love seeing big numbers, but you're looking at an almost doubling of temperature, a 50% increase in both power draw and fan noise for a marginal performance increase. If you want to overclock, buy a $100 cooler or even more. I wouldn't do it on these, but I will tell you that at stock clock speeds, these were very, very quiet. To make a very long story short, the MA620P would be my first choice between these two if the price is about the same. As I mentioned before, linked in the description below to Amazon and Newegg for both of these. Compare prices. If the MA410M is less expensive by 20-ish dollars, if it's a really good deal, maybe there's a mail-in rebate or other discount, then it was definitely worth considering. But if the price is about the same, get the better cooling and the easier installation of the 620p. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below and click that bell notification icon to be notified of all of my upcoming videos. Comment section down there below, let me know what you think. Do you want to see more, less? Was this interesting, helpful, informative, useful, or just entertaining? Please let me know down there. And as I said before, links to Amazon and Newegg, those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. Use those when shopping. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.